What's up guys? Welcome back to our channel. It is Meg here and Kate. Kate and I have a book review coming at you today. I'm so excited for you guys to be with us today. Today's video is all about books. We're going to do a book review on just some of the books we've read so far in 2020 that we've enjoyed, not necessarily enjoyed. We have read some different books in 2020 and we want to share um, what we liked about those books and what we didn't like about them. We're excited for you all to come along. This is just a few of the books. We've read several more, but can't tell you all about them. So we picked our top three favorites so far and we're going to share them with you today. I've always loved reading and it's just an adventure to go read and get to escape the real world. It's kind of nice just to escape for either a few minutes, a few hours into a whole different world and enjoy the books that we have with us. Hopefully you can take these recommendations and decide if these books are gonna be a good fit for you. Um, we have a few different books from a few different genres. I know I personally really like to read um, autobiographies and nonfiction, but I also like to read mysteries and thrillers and suspense, so I think Kate and I have very kind of different, uh, you wanna say hi, Toby? Kate and I definitely have different tastes in books. So this will be interesting because you'll get an idea of some books from all different categories. Let's get into it. I'm gonna share with you today is The Flight Girls. I don't actually have the book anymore. I've passed it along to my grandma actually, but this has probably been the most favorite book I have read in a very long time. I could not put it down. It's one of those books where you stay up till two or three o'clock in the morning reading because it's so good. Um, it takes place during World War II and the main character, Audrey, it starts out in Pearl Harbor right before the attacks on Pearl Harbor and she's a pilot training Navy pilots and she's caught in skies during the Pearl Harbor attacks and it talks about how she left Pearl Harbor, ended up joining the WASP program and becoming a, a WASP for the Air Force. And it talks about her adventures being a WASP. Of course, there's a love story in there. And there's also lots of historical facts and events that take place. It is a historical fiction. I absolutely loved it. Like I said, it was one of those books where I could not put it down. I passed it along to my grandma. She read it in a day and a half. So if that gives you anything of how good it is, 10 stars, absolutely recommend it. I don't know if Meg would read it. I would hope so, but historical fiction and nonfiction is definitely not her favorite genre, but I think she would enjoy this one. And I hope you do too. Definitely pick it up, worth the read. The first book I'm gonna talk about today is Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. And I chose to read this book because I've read a few other books by her, Big Little Lies, The Husband's Secret, and I absolutely loved both Big Little Lies and The Husband's Secret. Um, I also read The Hypnotist Love Story by Leanne Moriarty, which that one wasn't my most favorite. Toby, you're shaking the camera. But this one is called Nine Perfect Strangers, and it is about a group of people that go to a wellness center for a wellness retreat, and it ends up being a lot different than they expected, and there is some illegal drugs involved. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. Hmm. The lady that runs the health resort um, ends up having some really crazy ideas about how to be your healthiest self and these people get caught up in it. So this book, I would say, I would give it maybe like a three and a half out of five stars, maybe a four. I don't know if I could go that far. It was interesting and I definitely was wondering what was happening the whole time, but it wasn't a page turner like her other books. Um, what I did like about it was just that I'd never really read anything um, similar to it before. And when I started reading it, I hadn't read a synopsis or anything of it. So I didn't really know what I was getting myself into with it. But overall, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Do I think Kate would like this book? Um, well, I don't think she would probably feel the same way I do about it, that it's not the worst, but it's not the best, but maybe someday she'll read it and we'll find out. The next book I talk to you guys about is The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. She also wrote the book Me Before You, which many of you have probably heard of as well. Um, and I absolutely loved this book. I listened to this one actually on Audible. <laughs> This video is not sponsored by Audible, but I just wanted to share 
how much I love it. It is an amazing subscription through Amazon and I highly recommend it for any book lovers out there who, if you don't always have the time to read, at least you have the time to listen to it and you get to escape into those magical world of books. And I absolutely love Audible and I think it's totally worth it. Not sponsored, but I just wanted to share how much I love it. Stars. It takes place in rural Kentucky in like around the 1940s, early 1940s. It's about the story of Alice. She is a British young lady who meets her husband in Britain. He's an American citizen. They move back to Kentucky to his hometown and she realizes that it's not all that she thought it was going to be and it's not as fun until one day they're in church and uh, one of the ladies in town comes up and starts talking about this initiative that the First Lady was starting and it's the Pack Horse Library, which actually was a real thing that took place from 1938 to 1943, I believe. Um, and basically it was women on horseback and they were mobile libraries basically, especially in rural Kentucky at the time. A lot of people would, couldn't leave their homes, couldn't leave their farms. So instead of them coming to the library, and getting books, the ladies of the Pack Horse Library brought the books to them, um, which I thought is a really great idea if you think about it. Alice joins the Pack Horse Library, realizes life in Kentucky, married to her husband is not all that great. Um, of course, there's a murder mystery story in there, a few love stories, and it, it just keeps you on your toes the entire time. Like I said, absolutely love this book, highly recommend it. I've told Meg to read this several times already, so I definitely recommend it to her. And I would definitely give it four or five stars. So lately in quarantine, I have definitely been working and I guess really over the past year in general, I've been working on just being my best self and taking care of myself and making sure that I am just creating the best possible environment for myself to live in, to work in. And one of the ways that I have really wanted to focus on doing that is by decluttering and minimizing my space and really just making sure that everything I have is useful and I know where it is and it's organized and I'm sure this book is one that you all have heard of before but I think that it is probably a classic in cleaning and organizing and that is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. If you've seen her show but you haven't read this book, I definitely recommend you reading it from start to finish. Even if you don't have the time right now to fully clean out your house in the Marie Kondo method, I still think this is a really great book to just kind of think about your possessions and your relationship with them. It gives you actual things to do. It has very step-by-step -step guidelines to follow. Marie Kondo talks about her journey with organizing and how when she was younger she would always want to organize but she felt like she was constantly organizing and reorganizing and decluttering and it just felt like it was just a never-ending cycle. With her method she really finds that her clients don't have to keep decluttering and that was what I was really searching for. Having that simplified space to really just thrive in and not have anything that is overwhelming you or taking up too much space or just there and you don't use it. Or I think another thing that's really hard is like personal attachments to material things. And Marie Kondo talks a lot about buy and let it go so that you can move on with your life and not have all this material possession dragging you down. So if you're looking for a way to clean and organize, then I definitely recommend the life-changing magic of tidying up. I really think this book is life-changing. I would give it a 10 out of 10 or five out of five star. And I think the popularity of this book really shows the effectiveness of the KonMari method. So I definitely recommend this one. Would Kate like this book? I don't think Kate likes self-help books as much as I do. I've definitely been on a self-help book kick for like the past year and um, she's kind of still working her way into those so if I could convince her to read this I think that she would definitely like it but it's one of those things where if you're not like ready to take in the advice then maybe it's not the right time for you to read it and that's okay. The next book I want to tell you all about is Call Your Daughter Home by Deborah um, I was really excited about this book 
because all the reviews I read, they compared it to like Where the Crawdads Sing, which was an amazing book, and a few others. And so I had high hopes for it, and it wasn't terrible, but it was good. It takes place in the South in 1924, and three women, um, Gertrude, Annie, and Retta. Gertrude is the mother of four kids and will do anything and everything to save her daughter. Retta is the first generation freed slave, and Annie is the matriarch of the Coles family and the Coles farm. And so somehow these three women from all different walks of life come together, and their stories um, overlap. And it was a good book, but I just found it very slow um, and not too exciting until the very end. The ending is very interesting, but at the same time, I feel the storyline doesn't completely end. Like I kind of, I left me asking many questions about what happened to the characters at the end of the book. And like I said, it was very slow. It was good, but it could have had a lot more excitement. It just kind of felt like rattling on and on. But so I would give this book probably like a three out of five. I didn't like it, so I wouldn't recommend it to my sister, but you never know. Definitely check it out and see if you like it. All right, the last book I'm gonna talk to you guys about, I actually listened to on Audible. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover of it right here. As you can see, it's called Atomic Habits. I listened to this book on Audible. Um, I love listening to audiobooks while I'm walking my dog, especially while I'm doing the dishes to kind of keep my mind off my least favorite chore, um, while I'm cleaning, all of that kind of stuff. Any idle activity, I love listening to audiobooks. So I listened to Atomic Habits and it talked a lot about the science of habits and building habits and how to make the most of your habits. But not only did it just talk about the background, it gave personal stories, examples of people that had built their habits um, in ways to really improve their life. And the other amazing thing about it is that it gives you, again, very step-by-step tips and steps to help you build your own habits and action steps that you can take to build those habits. So it really gave me as a reader a great experience to understand my habits, but then also be able to put them into action as well. So if you're looking to build your habits, whether that be your gym habit, drinking water habit, your whatever it may be, this book definitely helps you build those habits and really makes you think about how they're impacting your daily life and how to make your habits stick. The rule is not just you build a habit in 27 days. There are lots of different ways that you can easily build a habit and it gives you all kinds of tips for that. So definitely recommend Atomic Habits. All right, guys, that's going to be our video for today. Hopefully you enjoyed our book review. We will definitely have more when we finish up some more books. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up right down there. Really helps support our channel, especially as we're growing right now. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed below and click that little bell thing so you can get notifications. We put out new videos on Mondays and Fridays so you can start and end your week with us. Thank you guys so much for watching our video today. We really appreciate it. Definitely check out the books we mentioned okay? and we hope you enjoy them. If you have any other suggestions on books that we should read or you think we'll like, please leave those in the comments below. I love getting new book suggestions. These are just some of the books that I plan to hopefully finish reading by the end of the summer. Fingers crossed I can get through all of these. But definitely, I know a lot of people's libraries are still closed reach out to your friends, start a book exchange. That's how I got all six of these books was through my friends and book swaps. Just keep reading and enjoying the world of books and the love of them. Thank you guys again, and we hope you have a great day. Bye.